threes. He can put it on the floor, a high basketball IQ guy. Douglas passed up the three look. Nicholas puts it on the ground. It goes right by Dower, then had it stripped away. It goes out of bounds off of Ryan Nicholas. So a turnover for the Pilots. Mark Few calls a play from the bench. And that point guard that Miles is talking about, Pangos, starts the offense. Double team help started to come. It's out of bounds off of Portland. Timeout here at the Child Center. The Pilots with the early two point advantage. All right, Ryan, thanks. Here in Portland, 9 7 lead for the Pilots, 11 52 to go in the first half. The West Coast Conference matchup. Some of the news and notes from around this WCC. St. Mary's still undefeated in league play, but a very tough week tonight at Loyola Marymount, then at BYU on Saturday. And those Lions are playing real well, Miles. Meanwhile, tough times for the Santa Clara Broncos. I think LMU is really the surprise of the league, Dave. Five and two in league, but all five of those wins on the road. And if you ask probably any coach in this conference, at the worst they can finish five and three on the road, that a coach would take that and then try to hold serve at home court. They're a dangerous team. They have three guys, Ashley Hamilton, Drew Viney, and Anthony Ireland, who are just phenomenal. Angos misses the three. LMU, one of those road wins already at BYU. Extremely tough place to play. With about 11 minutes to go down in Los Angeles, St. Mary's has a six point lead at those Lions we're talking about. So we'll keep you posted on that game. Huge conference implications in that one. Mitrovic hits a three. No, his foot was on the line. It's a two. That's a huge con confidence booster for Mitrovic. Last year, he was sixth in the country in three point percentage. Hasn't been able to get it going this season yet. Good hustle by Portland there. Turnover. Here come the Zags. Bell in transition. Contact, no whistle. Rogers to the bucket. Rogers, a blocking foul. He'll shoot free throws. Here goes Mitrovic coming off that baseline screen. Does a great job of getting his feet set. Quick release. He never dips the basketball when he shoots because he's strong enough with his upper body to where he catches it. He can release it from there. But a big confidence booster for Mitrovic and for the pilots to see that shot go in. His first one went in and out for him to knock that down. He carried the pilots tonight. Well, it's been such a disappointing season for the senior who was one of the top three point shooters in the country last year, almost 50%. And this year, down below 30 percent and let's remember it's a big difference now last year he was maybe the third option maybe fourth option on offense when you have Knutson Sigma and Stoll in the lineup so he got a lot more open looks and then early in the season he's the guy now he has to adapt his game learn to put the ball on the floor a little bit better rather than being just a catch and shoot player all the time David Stockton in for the first time for the Zags trying to help get their offense going before Stockton got to the bucket a whistle away from the ball and a foul against Gonzaga. Elias Harris called for the foul. Harris was just trying to do a good job of getting low post position, trying to seal his man, but they called him for, for rooting the defender out. And you watch here, Harris just stepping in. Not much there. He caught the hand a little bit, but I mean, it was for a millisecond. Well, I think you can see why Mark Few was very unhappy with that whistle. Rodgers playing well in the first half after the start. Vandermars, another hook shot. Impressive looking freshman native of the Netherlands. He's a young man that got in the late signing period. They love his touch. He's only been playing basketball for about four or five years. So still learning the game. Dower shoots a long jumper, no good. Wow, the Zags struggling big time. They are three for 17 shooting in this game. Bad entry pass there and out of bounds off of Gonzaga. The Pilots got lucky. David, you got to credit the Pilots' defense for a lot of that. They're contesting shots, not giving up easy drives to the basket. They've been rotating, getting some turnovers. 
They've really taken the Zags out of their offense. Remember now, they've tried three different defenses in the first half. Portland's not shooting the ball particularly well themselves. They can tag it three for 17 from the floor. Bailey had it poked away, then dribbled it away, and committed a foul. So out of control for John Bailey, the freshman Portland turns it over. John Bailey, first Bailey just trying to do a little bit too much. He's not comfortable out there. 25, 30 feet from the basket. Fortunately for the Pilots, that's a dead ball turnover, so it's not going to lead to anything in transition for the Bulldogs. Now, you mentioned a teaching year for Eric Reveno and the Pilots and a teaching moment there as Bailey goes to the bench. You get those mistakes with such an incredibly young team. That's yeah. the kind of team Portland has. And Reveno, I think, is one of the best teachers, not only in this conference, but in America. He, he learned under Mike Montgomery at Stanford. Played for Tom Davis at Stanford, two of the best in the game. He, he really credits one of his biggest influences, Pete Newell, the great big man coach. Eric Revino, six year at the head of this pilot's program. Here's David Stockton. Entry pass to Dower through the double team, missed another shot. I like the way Rodgers has played under control, taking care of the ball, getting them into their sets. Important for the pilots to get a shot each time down the floor. Getting the start tonight and really playing like he did earn that spot. Mitrovic. Over the top, lob pass and a tough catch for Vandermars. Nicholas with some contact, no good. Gets his own miss. Ryan Nicholas misses a layup. Now three on two. Marquise Carter into the key, scores. Marquise Carter. The Zags make you pay quickly. The outlet by Stockton to find Carter. One dribble gets into the lane. Made a tough shot over Mitrovic. But the Zags want to get out in transition. And in that instance, making Portland pay not for a turnover, but for a missed shot from close range. Now, that is a turnover. Substitution of the pilot. Dorian Payson and Lots of emotion here tonight inside the Child Center, not just because these two teams up here in the Northwest are rivals and have been for a long time. There are lots of Zags fans here inside the Child Center, and I think the fans are sort of going at it just like these two teams are. Here's Pangos. Kevin Pangos gets fouled a long way for the basket by the freshman Kaysen. So that'll send us to a timeout here. Portland playing well in the first half. The Zags still trying to get it going. 14 to 9. That's the pilot's lead. Back here tonight in Portland, where we want to remind you that coming up on Saturday, ESPN, a totally full day of college hoops, and it starts with a couple of games. St. John's and Duke at noon Eastern, then Kansas and Iowa State in that hotly contested Big 12 at 2 Eastern, coming up on Saturday on ESPN. Dave Fleming, Miles Simon here in Portland. Miles, give me your National Player of the Year candidate. Certainly Thomas Robinson of the Jayhawks is one of them. Thomas Robinson's a guy that I've seen three times in person this year, and he's just been a man-child. Really learned a lot playing behind the Morris Twins last year under the tutelage of Danny Manning, one of the best post-development coaches in the country. But where I knew and when I knew Thomas Robinson was going to be a standout, I got to spend time with him and coach him at the LeBron James Skills Academy this summer, where he competed against Jared Solinger, Anthony Davis, the Plumleys, and he was the most dominant player at that camp. And he showed a skill level that you didn't get to see last year. I had him on my first team All-American ballot in the preseason, but now he's playing like the player of the year. Sacre, strong move to the bucket, and a travel call before the foul. A traveling violation that negates the whistle that would have been a foul and sent Sacre to the line. It's a good job defensively of moving, moving his feet. Case in the freshman gives him a little space, moves his feet. Good call by the official. So the shuffle before the contact. Here's Nicholas. Nicholas scores. And he got smacked in the mouth, too. I think he lost his contact and he was able to pick it up. I don't think it was a two. Out of bounds off of Portland. Bailey was right there for the rebound. And Nicholas, that's exactly what he's trying to do with all that cut. He showed the official. He said, How was that not a foul? My contact got knocked out. He's trying to put it back in. And he gave he gave the thumbs up sign, said, I'm ready to go. But a great sweep through. Look how low. 
in basketball, the low man is going to win the battle. Ryan Nicholas is shorter than Dower. Dower has to get in a better defensive stance, but Nicholas with the sweep through and able to power up and finish. So the sophomore who's from Spokane. So grew up in the shadow of Gonzaga playing well here against the Zags tonight for Portland. Well, he was a high school teammate at Gonzaga Prep of David Stockton. Stockton, good entry pass to Elias Harris who'll go to the free throw line. And Nicholas knows these guys well when he goes back home during the summer times. John Stockton, obviously David's dad, holds pickup games weekly at a gym, at a facility that he has. And Nicholas participates in those games with all these Zach players, uh, former former Zach players that come back, NBA guys. So it gives him a sense of confidence against the Bulldog players because he's seen these guys before over the last few years. And he's playing like it here tonight. He and the Pilots with the six-point lead. Harris gets to the free throw line. Elias Harris will see if that can get him going a bit. Just one for five from the field in the early going. And the Zags show some pressure. But then the pressure backs off. And Rodgers will walk the ball up the court. Derek Rodgers right against David Stockton. Got to the lane but had to pass it out. Well, I want to see Portland keep attacking that paint. Remember, Robert Sacre has two fouls. Bailey pushed off. That's an offensive foul. Good defense by Marquise Carter. Excellent job by Carter to move his feet, kind of swipes at the basketball. Bailey not able to create enough separation, had to push off. First foul against Bailey. But the Zags are in the bonus. That was not a, a, a bonus shooting foul, but from here on out through the end of the first half, Zags will be at the free throw line. Angos wants a screen from Harris. Didn't really use it. Went baseline and a nifty move. Dave, as I spoke about earlier, he has all the tools in his bag. There, rejects the on-ball screen. Excellent touch off the glass on the floater. And the best thing about it, he didn't charge as the pilot's defender rotated over. Now a timeout for Eric timeout. Revenel and Portland. the Pilots. We have a timeout here ourselves. Three-point lead. Portland still ahead. Academic issues that needed to be cleared up. But losing Fab Mello, who really got himself into great playing shape this year, leading the team in block shots, anchors that zone from the middle there. A big difference maker. They lose the first game and only game that they've lost against Notre Dame on the road. Fab Mello wasn't there to anchor that defense. A difference maker. And let's remember West Virginia, one of the better rebounding teams in the country, especially on the offensive end. And Kevin Jones is a, is a force down low. Mello out indefinitely. There's another travel to Zags. He's been careless with the ball in the first half. That time, Elias Harris committed the turnover. Mark Few has to be concerned with the way this game is going. Well, excellent post defense. You see Nicholas give space, and then it's kind of like pulling the chair out. He doesn't give body contact the whole way through. Post guys love to feel where guys are at so they can spin off. Riley, the floater, no good. Bags pushing it up the court. David Stockton, excellent passer himself. Portland got back on defense. Stockton, nifty bounce pass, and Harris reverses it in. What a great pass to thread that through the seam right there. Excellent use of the pick and roll. He dragged it out just enough where the big guy had to stay. Harris with the strong roll to the rim. Now a double backdoor kind of move, but the shot was blocked as David Carr couldn't finish. The pilots are getting chances close to the basket and missing a lot of those shots. Stockton, three, no good. And for the pilots, they've had to lead the majority of the half. Those are opportunities that need to go down. These little chippy layups, they've missed at least three of those near the basket. Still with a one-point lead. They haven't beaten the Zags in 17 tries. Nicholas hits a three. Coach Reveno just describes him as a gamer. Didn't play a lot as a freshman, came on towards the end of the year and got some more PT. Really blossomed just in practice time, practice situations. Now this year is really taking control of this Portland team. The kid from Gonzaga Prep in Spokane. Sacre lost it, but a whistle and a foul. Vandermars called for the foul. A sloppy pass 